Hey folks, Nick Mock 007 here, and long time no see. Um, sorry I haven't been making videos as frequently as I'd like, but heck, maybe I've been making them more frequently than you'd like. Anyways, it's just that my dog uh, ate my YouTube video homework. All right, so today I wanted to talk to you about lighting. I've got several videos I wanna make on this topic, including an upcoming Science Alliance with CAM, but before I do that, I wanted to talk to you briefly about some terms that I think are important, including PAR and PER. So now most of you know in the olden days, things were simple. Men looked like men, women looked like women. Uh, no, wait, that's the wrong rant. But really, things used to be fairly simple. Watts per gallon was actually a reasonable estimate of how much lights your plants were getting. But with the advent of more and more efficient lighting, LEDs being a great example of that, this whole watts per gallon rule uh, really doesn't make any sense anymore. Basically put, think about the LED. They generate less heat and more light per watt energy. So a nine watt LED fixture can provide the same amount of light, you know, roughly as a 60 watt incandescent bulb. But how do we know that? Do people in lab coats get paid to sit around and stare at light bulbs and rate how bright they are? And if they do, how much do they get paid and where can I apply? Uh, now, as valuable as a degree in light bulb cosmetology may be, there's actually a better way to measure light intensity, though it is just another example of how robots are stealing our jobs. Uh, well, actually, there's a measure of light called lux, and lux is what I mentioned before. It's the intensity of light as perceived by our eyes. And if we were growing eyes in our tanks, then we'd stop the conversation right here. But let's go one step further from eyes to plants. Uh, I'm sure most of you have heard the term par. But pop quiz, what does PAR stand for? If you answered C, uh, pause this video, go get yourself a cookie or an algae wafer. Um, but actually you can think about PAR as the intensity of light as perceived by plants. But let's break down the term PAR, photosynthetically active radiation. It means the radiation or light that's used by plants for photosynthesis. But put more precisely, it's the section of the spectral, lane, uh, spectral range of light between 350 to 750 nanometers, which is needed by plants and corals for photosynthesis. And if you look at the graph, you can see it runs from the actinic UVA to near infrared. Green, yellow light occupies the middle spectrum. And generally speaking, we see light between 400 to 700, though mostly between about 550 to 620. Uh, in this next graph, you can see the two peaks, and these show which aspects of the PAR spectrum are beneficial for photosynthesis for chlorophylls A and B. Though just a word of caution, this chart, it's not precise, it just gives a general representation of these peaks. And one more thing to note, uh, the units of PAR are micromoles of photons per square meter per second. So a PAR of one is one millionth of a mole or a photon striking a one square meter per every second. Now, how do you measure PAR? Well, with a PAR meter, of course. And there are various places to get a PAR meter, but even places like Bulk Reef Supply sell them. An excellent quality hobbyist grade model can be had for about $350, which is a bit pricey, but you can actually get really good ones for in the $100 range and much cheaper if you're willing to go the DIY route, though that's another video. Now, as we start to think about PAR and growing plants, uh, there are three main areas to consider. One, the phototropic response, and this is the chlorophyll containing plant responding to a positive light source to begin the process of photosynthesis. Two, we have photosynthetic response. And this is the process which begins the, uh, when the energy from light is absorbed by proteins called photosynthetic reaction centers that contain chlorophyll. And then three, chlorophyll synthesis. And this refers to the chemical reaction which occurs at the correct wavelength of light that results in continued growth of the plant. Okay, so that's great. Low par for low tech tanks, high par for high tech tanks. Why do we need to know anything else? Enter PER, which stands for pump up the radiation. Well, maybe it should, but it actually stands for photosynthetically usable radiation. Now, think about that for a second. Radiation or light used in photosynthesis. Isn't that the holy grail of planet tank lighting? Yes and no, uh, but let's not jump the gun. So PER is the measurement of how much of the PAR wavelengths are useful light absorbed by pigments, thus stimulating photosynthesis, excuse me, photosynthesis in plants. By definition and using a bit of logic, PER must be less than PAR, and PER will depend on both the pigment complement of the plant and the spectral composition of the available light. And the flip side is that PAR will always be equal to or higher than PER. But here's the problem. There's no good data on this, though 
one theory would lead us to believe that to get the best per results, uh, your lighting would have wavelengths that would follow the graph showing the known absorption spectrum for the two most common chlorophyll types. But in a position long defended by none other than Tom Barr, another argument goes something like, without knowing the pigment complement of the plants in question, which is the aforementioned lack of data, uh, you can't really say much uh, of anything about specific relationship between PAR and PER. But put plainly, PER is much more specific and calculated. Researchers would have to analyze every single one of our plants chlorophyll to sort this out. Should I get a Kickstarter rolling or should you? Uh, so yeah, that's not gonna happen. There's no money in it. And to make matters worse, plants can adapt uh, to different wavelengths found within the PAR spectrum. So theoretically over the course of time, PER could eventually be similar to PAR. And this would make it even more difficult to pinpoint which wavelengths you would be testing for. All right, so I'm gonna leave this video here for the moment. Um, I've seen some folks tossing around the per notion as something that is better than, or it's gonna replace par. Uh, folks, this ain't gonna happen. Uh, now, I'm gonna post some links in the description, like I always do. Uh, go read a little bit about par, get a general understanding of what it is. Uh, some say 30 and under is low lighting, 60 to 80 plus is high lighting, but there's no real consensus. Either way, it will give you a better sense of how to properly light your aquarium. And in the next few videos, I plan to look at some different lighting options and take a closer look at the spectrum. I see more and more questions about what color of lights, red, blues, greens, violets, should I be using? Until I talk at you next time, uh, maybe try some of those multicolored strands of Christmas lights and see how those grow plants. Uh, let me know how that goes. See you in the next one.